So in this video, I'll be talking about linear regression. So the goal of regression is to find the best fit line for a set of data. But how do we do that? Well, I'll show you. We begin by making a few assumptions, and this will help us uh, construct a model. So first, we're going to assume a linear structural model for the first assumption. And then for the second assumption, we're going to assume that the error terms are random variables, each drawn from a normal distribution with mean equal to zero and equal constant variances. So this is a diagram illustrating the assumptions one and two. So you can see in this diagram that we have a linear structural model with a theta star being the true parameters. That's going to be transposed multiplied by xi, which is your data set. Then you're going to add an error term, which is the wi. And that's going to be drawn from a normal distribution with mean 0 and standard deviation sigma squared. And for each, uh, for each xi, you know, for each i, you're going to have the same sigma. So the variances are constant. Uh, that's called homo scedasticity. And then we'll see later on that you could have something called heteroscedasticity, in which you have the sigma different for each i. And yeah. Oh wait, one more thing. Uh, so for the thetas, you have theta naught, theta one, theta two. And for the x's, you start with one because uh, you have theta naught plus theta one x one plus theta two x two all the way to uh, x um, something. <laughs> I'm not really sure what I should call it, but yeah, there we go. So just to make things clear, i is the ith data point. So you have like, I don't know, n data points, and you can index them by i. Like, let's just say the fifth data point, that'll be like the, uh, that's when i is 5, for example. So uh, what do we have here? Um, right, so since wi is drawn from a normal distribution with mean 0 and standard deviation sigma squared, that means that the probability of wi is equal to this expression over here, where uh, wi is the value, and the mean is 0, and the standard, standard deviation is sigma. Then we can get rid of that 0 to, have, to get this expression over here. So we can kind of rearrange the equation and say that um, wi is equal to yi minus theta star transpose times xi. So we can say that, that expression right there is drawn from a normal distribution with mean 0 and standard deviation sigma, or variance sigma squared. So therefore, we have the probability of wi with, uh, with theta star as some more parameters is this expression over here. And we should just substitute wi for um, yi minus theta star transpose times xi. So you can actually think of this as, uh, in another way, you can think of this as the probability of yi given xi with parameters theta star. Uh, because, and the reason why you could do this is because uh, yi could be like, you know, that value, the value that you want in that, you know, your x value in that probability curve, that bell shape distribution, the normal distribution, and your mean could be uh, theta star transpose times xi. Uh, that could be your mean and your standard deviation is sigma. So that means that, uh, hmm, I'll have to think about that a little bit more. Hmm. Anyway, let's keep on going. So the third assumption that we're going to use here is that the WIs are independent events. That means that one doesn't influence the other. Or the probability of WA uh, and WB, for example, 
is equal to wa times w, sorry, probability of wa times the probability of wb. Instead of the other formula in which you have probability of a given b times probability of b. So it's not that, it's the other one. Yeah. <laughs> so that means in this case that we can multiply the probability of yi given xi i's throughout all the i's uh, or each data point to get the probability of your, your, your regression line, which are your y's, given your data, which is the x's, with parameters theta star, true parameters theta star. Remember that. So now we have a formula for the probability of observing all the y's given all the x's as a function of the true parameters theta star. However, we don't know the true parameters. So let's define our unknown parameters just as theta. So instead of theta star, we have theta for the probability of y given x colon, sorry, sorry, semicolon <laughs> theta. And so now we want to choose the thetas such that the, this probability is maximized. So we want to maximize the probability that so we, we want the regression line that maximizes the probability that you'll find the data that you observed. Yeah, so it's basically the, uh, the linear model that the data was most likely generated from. We're going to try to find that. All right, so I did this slide a while ago, but I'll try to remember. Uh, so basically, theta hat is the... Hmm... Oh yeah, that's the estimated true parameters. But we want to maximize the function p of y given x with parameters theta. Uh, we want to find the thetas that maximize that function, as we were saying on the last slide, and the slide before too. So that's going to be the maximum. We're going to that's going to be the the theta that maximizes uh, that multiplication that repeated multiplication of that expression for the first line. Then for the second line, we're going to say that we're going to take the natural log of it because since the natural log is a monotonic function, that means that when we take the maximum of it, of the expression within the, nat the natural log, it's the same as taking the expression of the natural, the it's, it's the same as maximizing the natural log of that expression, if that makes sense. And the reason why we take the natural log is because, uh, as we see here in the third line, that's, or the fourth line total, that um, you get addition instead of multiplication. So it's actually easier to maximize, as we'll see on the next slide. All right, so we simplify it by saying that, so if we want to take the, if we want to figure out the thetas that maximize that expression, it's the same as taking the thetas that maximize the expression with the thetas in it. So that's why we have that simplification. And it's the same as maximizing the expression with only the thetas in it, instead of the one over, or sorry, the negative one over two theta, or sorry, sigma squared. So we can take that out and we can maximize the sum of squares. And that may sound familiar if you've seen this before, but that's where that comes from in terms of the uh, maximum likelihood estimation points of view. So therefore, the theta that maximizes your expression p of y given x with theta as your parameters is equal to the minimum, or sorry, the theta that minimizes and I said maximizes on the last slide, but I meant minimizes because of that negative sign. Uh, maximizing something with a negative sign is the same as minimizing something without the negative sign or multiplied by negative one. So that's a little mistake that I made on the last slide, but I'll keep it in there anyway. So yeah, so theta hats is the maximum likelihood estimation of theta star, the true parameters. 
which is the minimization of a sum of squares problem. Let's remember we made three key assumptions. So this model isn't general, it's just for it's just a model given that these assumptions are true. So we assumed a linear structural model. We assume that the error terms are drawn are for each data point drawn from a normal distribution with mean of zero and sigma squared as the variance. And the third assumption was that we said that the events, uh, the error terms are independent and therefore the, uh, the yi's are independent as well. But what if we relax assumption two such that wi is drawn from a normal distribution with mean of zero, but with a variance of sigma squared i. That means that the variance for each data point is different. And this is what we call heteroscedasticity, if I said that right. Anyway, if we assume that, then we can do the same math. Well, not the same math, but uh, similar math in which we max we find the theta that maximizes our probability of y given x with theta as your parameters so we have this over here you can look at it if you want and if we do the same kind of thing where we take the natural log instead of so that instead of multiplying we add then we're maximizing this expression with the negative sign and divided by two sigma i squared. All right, so over here we have the maximization of that expression. We want to find the theta that maximizes that expression to the left. And so then we can take out that uh, negative one half down there because because that's a constant. And so then we get the minimization problem because remember that negative sign, since we multiply that by negative one, we get a minimization problem instead of a maximization problem because it's, you know, it's the opposite. And so we are left with that sum of squares over sigma i squared, because sigma i's, they're not constants. They vary with i. So we have to keep them in there. Did I say sigma? Oh yeah, yeah, I said sigma, yeah. Uh, so yeah, this is called a weighted sum of squares problem because the weights are one over sigma i squared and the squares are the difference between your observed, which is yi, your yi's, and your predicted, which is uh, theta transpose xi. That's your regression line. Uh, yeah, squared. So as we were, we were saying on the previous slide, theta hat is the maximum likelihood estimation of theta star, which is the minimization of a weighted sum of squares problem. But we can also relax assumption three. We can say that instead of the noise events being independent, we can say that they are dependent on each other, which is more complex. And I've never really seen anything like this before. In fact, I've never really seen this regression thing uh, before, like a few weeks ago. <laughs> so I'm pretty, new, I'm pretty new to it. So I may make a few mistakes, but that's okay. And here's a hint for you: um, the probability of event one and intersection with event two intersected with event three all the way to event n is uh, this jumbled up mess over here <laughs> to the right side. So the point is we can relax and enforce any assumptions that we want. But those three assumptions that we made are simply a good starting point. And here's three images below that I generated from ChatGPT or DALI using AI, which is kind of what we're doing right now. Because regression, linear regression, is machine learning stuff.
because I got it from my machine learning course that I'm taking. So pretty cool. So before we end this presentation, I want to say one quick thing. Um, so basically, we're using probability density functions, not probability mass functions. So I was kind of um, throughout this presentation thinking that we were using mass functions for probability, but we're actually using density functions, which actually kind of surprised me a little bit. So I kind of thought about it. And I used ChatGPT to help me out, and um, and it makes sense. Even though the probabilities are infinitesimally small, you could still, if you multiply the densities by an infinitesimally small um, dx, then you'll get the probability. But you want to maximize that probability still. So the interpreter, so the way you interpret it, I guess, is the way that I said it right there. Um, I'm still trying to like grasp it a little bit, but uh, I'll still leave everything uh, in the presentation that I said so far. Uh, but uh, yeah, that's just an important note. All right, that's the end of this video. And thank you for watching. I hope you learned something. And uh, have a great day.